want to turn right now uh, to um, uh, a friend uh, of mine. Uh, it's been a long time since I've spoken to him, however, and I'm pleased to have here on this show one of the top evaluators of, of football talent that's uh, anywhere to be found. The analyst from NFL Matchup, executive producer as well from uh, NFL Films, Greg Cosell. How are you, Greg? Rich, great to be with you. Thanks. Great to have you on this show, sir. Uh, is Joe Burrow number one overall a no-brainer in your mind? Because we're hearing that uh, maybe the Dolphins are considering trading up to number one overall, and we know how infatuated they've been with Tua for uh, a couple of years. What, how do you assess that very important question, Greg? Well, I see Joe Burrow as clearly the number one quarterback prospect. So, to me, he's number one. I think he's a better prospect than Tua. Why? I think Burrow has better traits overall than Tua. I think that when you look at Burrow, the only thing you would say with Burrow, you could say the same thing about Tua, but I think the only negative, and reasonable people will disagree about this, is that he doesn't have higher level arm strength. But I think every other quarterback trait that you're looking for, Burrow possesses. And uh, he's terrific with his understanding of pocket movement, both inside the pocket, outside the pocket. Uh, He's very poised. He's very calm. I think he has high-level traits other than the arm strength. And I think different people will see that differently, but the NFL passing game has changed. Where do you stand on the subject of Burrow, Greg, that um, his sample size is smaller? Uh, It was just this past year in which he exploded, and you'd like to see that happen in the NFL, not just in the year right before it. What are are your thoughts on that subject? Well, I'd answer it this way, Rich. I think that almost every quarterback is a system quarterback. There are very, very few exceptions to that. Maybe a Patrick Mahomes with his incredibly high-level talent. But every quarterback is a system quarterback. And it depends then on the system you're placed in and what you're asked to do. you could argue Drew Brees is a system quarterback. So I think that, uh, uh, to me, that that's not uh, necessarily a valid point to make about a quarterback uh, because there's very, very few guys who are so special that they transcend and can play in any given system. So where do you put Tua on the pecking order of the quarterback list then? Is he two? Uh I think Tua is very much system-based. I think he's a timing rhythm player. I think he he needs to be in an offense where the ball comes out quick, where he hits his back foot and he moves, uh, and the ball comes out. I don't think he's a great athlete. I think that for for Tua to be a great player in this league, stylistically, he would have to play like a Drew Brees. He's not Russell Wilson. He's not that athletic. I think uh, Hmm. his movement ability is fine, but it's not high level. So I think he needs to be with a team that understands what he is and what he isn't. Uh, But if you put him in that situation where RPOs are a big factor, where it's a rhythm passing game, he can be an effective player. And are you uh, aboard the borough as Brady comp? Are you aboard that? train Craig I think his poise and composure and calmness reminded me of Brady uh, I, I can he be Tom Brady boy uh, you know I, I tend to talk stylistically with yep. this kind of stuff because I'm, I'm always leery of comparing players to guys who are you know Hall of Famers like Tom Brady or Drew Brees so I always use the word stylistically uh, he moves better than Tom Brady Brady was a great mover within the pocket Burrow can move far better outside the pocket Greg Cosell here on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, it sounds like you're not very high on Tua, Greg, uh, I guess, but only in comparison to Burrow? Or, or where, where does he fall, I guess, in the, the whole pecking order with Herbert and Love and, and the rest of the group that we're going to see? I would say he's a good prospect. I don't think he's a great prospect. I don't think there's anything about Tua's game when you watch him that you say, wow. Um, I, I happen to be a, a Jordan Love fan. I, I like Jordan Love's game. I like his his overall talent level. I like the fact that he's a ball distributor, that he's also a rhythm player, and he's 6'4", over 220 pounds. Tua has one issue, Rich, that to me needs to be cleaned up and, okay. and can be cleaned up. He has a tendency, and maybe because he knows he doesn't have a big arm, he has a tendency to do what we call climb the pocket, step up into the pocket when he doesn't need to. And at six feet... That needs to be cleaned up because he will create his own pressure in the NFL if he does that. So do you take Herbert over Tua? I would potentially take Love over Tua, and I would take Love over Herbert. Huh. You're that high on Love. So are you aboard the Love as Patrick Mahomes train? No, no, no. That, that's. I understand that comparison. Uh, Mahomes is a really special talent. Right. Love is talented, and... And is he the kind of quarterback that theoretically has 
similar abilities, yes, but he's not Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is really a special talent. Not many people throw the ball like Patrick Mahomes. So based on what you're saying, Greg Cosell, uh, Washington definitely takes Chase Young at two after Burrow goes one to Cincy. You would think? Well, let me ask you a question. This is okay. a question I've been debating in, in my brain, which, you know, it. I've had a lot of time to get into my brain these <laughs> last two weeks. Right. Um, what's more important in the NFL these days, an edge pass rusher or a big-time corner? I know there have been studies done, and a lot of people debate that, uh, because oh. the nature of NFL passing games has changed, Rich, to where it's much more quick game. Right. Three-step drops, five-step drops, the ball comes out. Now, obviously, when it's third and nine, it's different, but... Jeffrey Akuda to me, and again, I'm going to throw a name out, and people are going to go, oh, my God, you're saying this is the way he is. But he kind of reminded me stylistically of Champ Bailey. I really like Jeffrey Okuda's tape. Well, I would take Chase Young in a heartbeat, I guess, to answer your question, Greg. Um, you know, and that's I, okay. You're not wrong. No, and I, and I understand that you know having that corner because of how quick the quick – how quick how how much quicker the quick game appears to be getting in the NFL on the offensive side of the ball um just being a big 10 guy and uh, and I saw Kuda but seeing seeing young man I mean I saw how Penn State tried to handle him and whether right. whether it was chipping him or then not just letting him letting him loose and then using that potentially to try and open up a screen or a quick game that didn't work. I mean, Michigan changed their entire offensive game plan for him to try and erase him. And he was, if you will, removed in terms of the stat sheet. But the fact is that they changed their plan for him. Um, that's the type of guy I would take. No, and I have no right. problem with that. I mean, he's he's got high-level traits, size, length, high-level athleticism. Um, I got to see him in person at the Maxwell Club dinner in Atlantic City, uh, and he looks the part. So, no, I have no problem with that. He he has high-level traits. Greg Cosell, NFL Films and uh, NFL Matchup Analyst here on the Rich Eisen Show. Where, where what? Uh, here's the question that we were asking at the combine. What is Isaiah Simmons? And by that, I mean the position. What, you draft him and play him as, as what in the NFL? I, I feel like I should answer that with a line from the movie Airplane. You know, yes. what is... Uh, you know, you, you remember that, of course. Yeah. Um, Isaiah Simmons, to me, and I'm in the minority, even though he's almost 6'4 and 238 pounds, I think he ultimately plays like a safety. So in a base defense, I almost see him as a big safety. I know many see him as a linebacker. But I think he's the kind of player that you want to get away from the bodies, not align him where the bodies are. Where I think his value is tremendous in the NFL is in sub-defenses, nickel or dime defenses, because that's where you can line him up at multiple positions. And I think in, in many ways he's a much, much bigger Tyran Matthew in the way he'll be mm. deployed. I think the Derwin James comp is, is reasonably valid. But Simmons is a great athlete. I don't know if you remember the interception he made against Ohio State. I guess it was oh, yeah. in the national semifinal game. He was retreating as a deep safety and then showed tremendous range to pick off Justin fields his game is more like a safety even though his size says linebacker greg after that play i received texts separate texts from two new york giants fans saying take him fourth overall that's what so i you got. remember the play well don't you oh yeah i mean t from two different two, two different friends of mine for giants fans saying i want him but uh don't you think that when uh when the giants are on the clock gettleman goes a protector for for daniel jones and if he does who who does he take? I think that's one of the most intriguing spots in this draft because Simmons is a special, special athlete. Right. There's not many Isaiah Simmons. If he was just, let's say, a good player, I think Gettleman in a heartbeat would take an O lineman. But I think they'll have a lot of they probably they're having them now as we speak. There'll be a lot of discussion about Isaiah Simmons at four because mm. guys like that don't come along very often at all. So then who's the best pass protector in the draft in your estimation? I love Jarek Wills from Alabama. Jedrick Wills. I think he's really, really a, a, a high level tackle. He played right tackle at Alabama. He certainly has the ability to play left tackle, although I think the delineation between the tackle positions is no longer meaningful 
in the NFL. Uh, a lot of people still speak as it, as if it is. I don't see that. But I think Jedrick Wills, to me, is the number one tackle. But there's four tackles who could easily go in the first round or in the top 15, and I think they're all worthy of being in that discussion. Greg Cosell here on the Rich Eisen Show. I, I was talking about it with Daniel Jeremiah live on the at the Combine, just watching all of these guys work out and you know we say it every year they're bigger stronger faster every year this year in particular you, you can get a top 10 player one would think in the bottom part of of the first round this year don't you think greg just the way that we're talking about needs being filled at quarterback spots and needs being filled at just you mentioned how special okuda is how special simmons is and how it all works out that you could wind up with a top 10 player maybe a 20 this year. What well, what's think? going to be interesting in this draft to me is the wide receivers. There's a lot of good ones, right? And I think one of the big storylines in this draft is how the league views big wide receivers. There is a ton of big wide receivers coming out this year, and I'm sure you remember that from the combine. There's a lot of big guys, oh, yeah. and they run. They ran pretty well. I mean, you look at Michael Pittman at six four two twenty three. He ran about a four five forty. Again, not that the forty yard dash is the see, see all and end all, but it just gives you a sense of movement and, and athleticism and there's a lot of big wide receivers, and I'm very curious to see how the league views these players. Well, I mean, the the phrase that we were using, at, again, during our combine coverage on NFL Network was finding Debo, that it was Debo Samuel was the guy that everybody wants to get this year because of how uh, sizable he is, but yep. also how versatile. You could put him in different formations everywhere, and you don't know where he's coming from. I mean, Shanahan just used him brilliantly this year. Who, who do you think that Debo is in the draft? Uh, well, I think there's a number of guys who can fill that role, and it's funny because when I t take my notes on receivers, I make it a point to talk about jet sweeps and orbit reverses, and I think there's a lot of receivers who theoretically fit that. I mean, Henry Ruggs, who's not as big, right. Henry Ruggs comes to mind. I mean, he's he's incredibly explosive. We knew that before he ran a 4-2-8. I think Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State is a fascinating guy in, in terms of, of the Debo Samuel mold. He's about 205 pounds. His wingspan was r ridiculous. Um, he's not a completely polished receiver because he's only played the position for a few years, but you want to get that guy the ball in space on the move. You Players like that. I'm bad at picking where guys get drafted. I'm not a good mock draft guy, Rich, yeah. but these guys fascinate me. Greg Cosell here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do you think Belichick's going to do at his quarterback position? What do you think his plan is right now, Greg? Well, you're asking me to get into the head of Bill Belichick? Yes, I am. I mean, just wow. or at least, um, or just to, just to, just to, again, because the evaluation involves Jared Stidham. The evaluation involves maybe somebody in this draft, Jalen Hurts, somebody yeah. that might be available rounds two, three, four, that Belichick thinks I can grab this guy with Hoyer and Stidham and create myself a quarterback room that, I can still win this division with this year and beyond. Well, I think if you if you look at Belichick, I think for him, and, and these are, are cliched terms, but they're true. I think Belichick really loves decision making and ball placement. Those are two of the traits I think that would be near the top of his list. Um, at, don't forget, at his core, he's a defensive coach. He does not want the ball turned over. And the NFL game for a quarterback now with so much quick game is about ball placement because it's ball placement that creates run after catch for receivers more than the receiver himself. So if you look in later rounds, you know, that's where it's hard to know. I mean, I, that's where – talking to players comes into play. I mean, there's a quarterback from FIU. I don't know if he likes him at all, but James Morgan is a very interesting later-round prospect. Uh, the wild card here is we don't know what he thinks of Stidham, just like we had no idea what he thought of Brady back uh, right. 20 years ago. No doubt. He may really like Jared Stidham and feel like, you know what, I can line up with this guy and he's going to be a good player. Well, where was he last year in your evaluation and where you think that, that, that he might be a second-year guy? Because, again, well, he, you know, we, we only yeah. have that one moment against the Jets where he threw a pick six, got benched, Cody Kessler gets signed, but he did just get released yesterday. I, I am wondering where, where you think Stidham could could actually reside as a second-year quarterback. Yeah, I think Stidham, Stidham was a guy whose tape was very erratic coming out of Auburn, and a lot of people did not love their offense, you know, the offense he was asked to run, but that's, that's all we could watch. Talented arm. Um, so I think ultimately you look at a player that has talent, and, and the issues can be worked on and cleaned up, and 
he threw the ball well and looked good in training camp last year and in preseason, whatever that means. Um, I made the point in my notes that he could develop into a quality starter, but there are many variables for him to reach that point. Now, he's obviously with a great coach and a great program. Uh, so I think within the context of what they want the quarterback to do, and you can't just say, well, they have Tom Brady. They have a certain sense of what they want their quarterback to do. I think that Stidham could fill that role. Before I let you go, Greg, you know I love talking about your uncle, right? Correct? What's that? You know I love talking about your no, uncle. No, you can talk about that all you want. Okay, your Uncle Howard, um, Greg Cosell here on the Rich Eisen Show. I, I do this job because of basically two guys, or I wanted to do it because of two guys, Marv Albert and, and Howard Cosell. When did you realize your uncle was who he was? Do you remember that? <laughs> wow, you know what? Because I grew up, we didn't grow up close to one another, okay. our families. Okay. So I didn't see him very often at all when I was young. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I, that's a hard question to answer. I kind of knew that. Let's see, I was born in 56. Okay. And obviously Howard became big in the 60s. He really hit the, the big time nationally with Muhammad Ali. So I got a sense of that probably when I was 10, 11 or, or so. Right. And I remember being at camp. I went to Kutcher Sports Academy of course. when I was, I think, 13, 14, around that age. The old cat skills. And I, I remember people starting to talk about it. And that's when I think I really took note that, hey, you know, my uncle was an important guy. Yeah. Again, I don't know how close you were. And I, I just, I just love, obviously, though, talking about him. That said, um, what do you think he would think about these days with all of these shows, with everybody offering an opinion, where it's all about opinions and split right. screens and, and this person has that opinion and that person has that opinion. Somebody has a column somewhere and has an opinion, and it's all opinion-based. And he was one of the first opinionated people to actually call games and offer opinions um, as, as, a, as a, one would think, a character trait. What, what do you think he would think well, about that, Greg? I, again, I think he'd probably have mixed feelings about it because the one thing about my uncle, as you know, is he was a lawyer. He was number one. He was the editor of the law review in his, at law school. So he was an incredibly smart, well-read guy. So I think for the people that really work hard at it, and we, we all know who works hard in the business and who doesn't, I think for those people, he'd have great respect. And for the others who just throw out opinions, I don't think he'd have much time for <laughs> Is that a good answer, Rick? That's a great way to put it. Maybe a lot more diplomatic than your uncle would have put it. How about that? Well, I was trying to be diplomatic, <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, <laughs> I'd like to still have a job after you, you no, know, get off the phone. No, no. Hey, hey, look, I remember reading his books talking about the jockocracy. He did yeah. not think that, that players should come off the field and be opinionated and, and have a microphone in front of them just because they played. You and know, I remember like, being in his first book because I went to Amherst College where obviously they don't give athletic scholarships and played sports there. Right. And he, I remember he used me in a, in, as an example of what ultimately college sports should be about. Boy, that was a long time ago. Think about that. You know, I mean, I, I'll never forget. I met him once because, you know, he was tight with Steinbrenner, right? Oh, sure. Okay. I met him once in the press box at Yankee Stadium. And, you know, I went up to him and I just said hello to him and what he, you know, meant to me. And he was he was nice. And then at one point he looked at my press credential and he goes, what erstwhile publication do you work for? And then he goes, the Staten Island Advance. Come on. Like that. And it was just one of my, I didn't know how to take it or not. He just, what erstwhile publication do you work for, is what he said. I'll never forget it to this day. Well, you should speak to Howard Katz. He has a great story as well about the first time he met my uncle. He was starting out in the business. Well, I mean, he goes way back to the Rune Arledge ABC Sports days. Now the president of NFL Films where where you, uh, you you obviously know uh, what it's all about. Greg, I appreciate the call. Truly do. Um, I, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to keep calling you before the draft. I really enjoy the chats. It's been way too long. I greatly appreciate the time. Oh, Rich, anytime. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. You know, look for my call. It'll be happening again. That's Greg Cosell. At Greg Cosell on Twitter. I follow him. You should as well.